Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 338. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm with my wonderful wife today, Mary Lou. Hi, everybody. It's so great to be here with you. I hope you have a warm cup of coffee or tea to sit down with us and join us in some prayers because there's there's a lot to be prayed about in there, sweetheart. Oh, there is. We've, uh, we've gotten in several. And, and, guys, you need to understand that we have the feedback that we get when we pray, things happen. Mm-hmm. We pray together. You, you guys are powerful in your prayers. Uh, we, uh, in fact, I've got one here that we didn't, for some reason, didn't get on her, and I'll bring it up here just in a minute. Uh, D uh, wrote us in that she had a stroke back in 2018, and she's still having speech and walking problems. Also, her husband has stomach problems and has a torn uh, muscle in his abdomen. Uh, and also, if you've been watching TV, you've been seeing the trucker movement that's in Canada. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's interesting that uh, when the liberals want uh, the protest or even an occupation, you can burn down stuff, you can run out cops and everything else. But, uh, boy, when they don't want it, all you have to do is honk your horn. And I think a judge yesterday silenced, said they couldn't honk their horns, which basically gave them no right to protest at all. And so, guys, we need to keep this in the yeah, prayer. I think, it's, prayer. I think it's spreading worldwide. And one of the things that we need to pray about because you, you keep on seeing they're, they're being a rowdy, they're being nasty, and, and you know the guys are out there, and basically some of them are having church services, and they're praying and all kinds of different things. And the left are trying to paint them as, uh, like with Occupy Wall Street and all that, not, not anything even near it. Uh, and my concern is they're going to try to sneak in there, cause something to happen, and call it a fall, you know, make it a false flag thing where they're, where they're they've, they've already used the word insurrectionist, Mary. How can people just be protesting and expressing the right to protest what the government is doing be called an insurrection? Well, they started that with January 6th, and it's just caught on. It has not. I think it's funny. Trudeau has actually left this, the, the nationalist capital, and he's out in a bunker somewhere. <laughs> he's probably a little, you know, you don't mess with truckers. <laughs> no, you don't. And uh, they can, they're having a hard time finding uh the trucking wrecker companies that will be willing to move these truckers because that's their bread and butter. (laughs) And every, every time they call it, Oh, we ain't doing that. Oh, oh, we're all sick with COVID. Oh, (laughs) Uh, so guys, that's, uh, that's, I think we're going to have the same thing here in America. Uh, this, these lockdowns and different things have just gotten ridiculous. Uh, also hearing from many, and this, this is something that we have heard for years. Many remnant members are just feeling isolated. And Father, I ask that you would help them uh, network with with other kindred spirits, Father, in the kingdom in their area, Father. You know, sometimes I I remember here a couple years ago, this one guy wrote me and he said, you know, he said, I thought I was alone in my community. And and he said, you know, he said, I, he said, I felt like one lone conservative Bible-believing Christian living in a community of weirdos, <laughs> you know, all these liberals. And he said, I just happened to mention something at a grocery store, and the guy behind me started, you know, talking it up, and I found out him and I were kindred spirits. He lived three doors down. <laughs> and so they're they're out there, and, and God can connect them together. And I hope we can do that with the conference center. Oh, I do people too. People can meet and... I'm mean, I'm excited. We've already got the uh, our contractor starting to see who can work and what schedule, and we're yeah, we're going to be picking out cabinets on Friday, picking out cabinets and colors, and and I think it's probably eight to ten weeks out to get the cabinets because they're custom built. But uh, just really excited about it. I can't wait uh, to get everything together. And you know, I I have a vision, and you know, it's it's so it's so neat, and it's it's like when uh, Mary and Steffi will go in there and decorate and stuff. You know, you have this vision of the way things should be. But as it begins coming together, it really gets exciting. Yeah, it? it does. You know, we also need to be praying about uh, the month of March is coming up, which was named after Mars, the god of war. And so a lot of times there will be a significance to those times. Just like God has significant times on his calendar, there are significant times on um, the pagan calendar. And I heard a 
person say uh, that God had told them that there was going to be war in the month of March. And so my prayer is, Father, have mercy. Have mercy. I mean, our nation, our military is not in the position of a war. If a war starts with Russia, this could escalate and turn into nuclear. I mean, there's all kinds of um, things that could happen through that. And I just, we need time. We do. We need time. And, you know, we, God was talking to me about the podcast this week and talking about we have need of endurance. And uh, that's one of the things that I believe has been part of the strategy to weaken America is to, to make it to where we are physically aren't, can't endure. We mentally can't endure. We're well, spiritually we've, weaker. We've, we've con- been conditioned into microwave everything. If mm-hmm. I can't have it right now, then that's just, just, I, just, I just fall apart. And, uh, you know, there's, a, there's an old axiom that said hard times make hard men. Hard men create good times. Good times create soft men. And soft men create hard times, mm-hmm. and there's we're definitely to that. we're definitely seeing that play out today. And there's a lot in the Word of God that it, it talks about uh, being able to have endurance and being a good soldier, and mm-hmm. and uh, somehow or another the uh, the American church has completely forgotten about that. I know that uh, believers all around the world they're very keenly aware of of the need for patience and endurance, but. Uh, somehow or another, we we have lost that concept in America. Did you have any other notes before we get going? Any other no, that's announcements? No, that's it. Oh, okay. Well, I was um, thinking about, you know, God was talking to me about endurance, and I, I often go, you know, drive through the Amish community going to work, and um, you'll go by, and there's just lines and lines of laundry hanging out there. And uh, I've never seen how they do laundry. I don't know if they have those old ringer washers. When I was a kid... My mom had an old ringer washer, and you had to run it through these rolling um, wheels, and it, it took the water out, then you hang it on the line and dry it. Quite quite an ordeal. I mean, doing laundry was quite an ordeal, and I, I think about that often as I go through the Amish because I see, you know, you'll, you'll meet those people in wagons, and you'll see them in the store occasionally, and the women look so tired and miserable. And I and it's got to be part of that is is they are worn out. I mean, it is nonstop. Or scrubbing your floors with a with a brush on your knees. Everything that they do is so much harder than what we have. And you know, I'm so thankful for the conveniences. I'm so thankful for washers and dryers and electricity and and all the things we have. But at the same time, Mike, um, you know, it it has caused us to to not have endurance. Yeah. Because you build endurance, it's just like, you know, a, a runner. You just can't take out and start running miles. You have to build endurance. You have to build physical strength. And we've, we've purposely, I believe, part of it just technology's made it easier, but I believe we've purposely, by the enemy, been made, he's weakened us on all fronts because he wanted us weakened because of this time period that is so crucial well, I mean, Mary, we even see that in, in the rise and the fall of the Roman Empire, that at their zenith, or at their pinnacle, uh, the Roman citizen was really pampered. And they just insisted on keeping that pampering at any cost to where they wouldn't, you know, we, we always talk about like in Jesus' day, how that the Roman soldier was the most ferocious, most deadly. Mary, did you know that he, that he evolved to the place to where they were having to hire mercenaries because they couldn't get their citizens to even serve in the military. Well, I don't doubt it. And uh, well, and look at all the all the elite, you know, throughout Europe that had servants. They didn't even dress themselves. I mean, I it's it just crazy. it just you know, and I, and it shows, you know, they they were controlled. It doesn't look like it, but I mean, there were demonic forces controlling all those people. And you know, I started thinking about. Um, God created us to handle endurance. Yes. And, you know, like the program multiples, like what I've went through, um, it, it causes you to adapt to survive. And, of course, God doesn't want anybody to be tortured and go through trauma and things like that, but you can learn a lot from, from how adaptable a program multiple is because I, I can give you an example, and Mike can testify of this. I can go without more sleep than most people and still stay frosty. Um, 
you know, most people, wouldn't you say a couple of nights without sleep and they would they would be they'd hindered. Be, they'd <laughs> be seeing pink elephants and purple dinosaurs. And I mean, I I can go a lot longer than that, you know, when, and I think that's, that had to adjust when my youngest daughter was born because she didn't sleep through the night till she was four. And um, I found out recently because she had gallbladder surgery that they found that she had a, a hernia in there that you could, and I had her checked by the doctor all the time because she cried so much when she was little and I thought something's got to be hurting her. You know, and I'd pray what little I knew to pray back then. But, I mean, she was, I, w- I was lucky if I'd get a couple of hours of, of sleep a night. And sometimes I didn't get any. And I think what happened, looking back, is I think I had to rotate parts. And and the reason I know that you can do this is because I've talked to other people th- that have done the same thing. I can be what I think is awake in the night and hear myself snore. <laughs> So, so that's a co, um, a division in the consciousness, and some parts are sleeping, and some parts are awake listening. I think that, I think that started when I had uh, Stephanie, because I think some part of me became aware, the mother instinct that I needed to protect her, and so, so I was, you know, it's it started to where there was always a part listening, to see if there was noise or anything like that. And so the reason I'm, I'm telling you this is because I want you to know if you're feeling weakened, if you're feeling like you just can't go on, you're capable of much more than, than you know. And God in you is, incap- is capable of so Right, much and, and just, just on the creative ability that God placed in us to, you know, for someone that's in trauma to dissociate. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gave the ability to us so we could survive. Our bodies made to survive. And can adjust, and your mind can um, can go through whatever it needs to go through to get you to survive. So, if on that level, you know you can you can do things. Think how much more with the power of the Holy Spirit in you you can do. And you know, I've I've prayed with people before, and they'd say things like, "I I just feel like I'm losing my mind." And I'd say, "No, don't say that. Don't come into agreement with that." I said, "Say what the Word says. Do you not been given a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind?" And I'd say, say that you have the mind of Christ. Come in agreement with, with what the Word says, because you don't want to get in agreement. That, that when we confess something and it's in agreement with the enemy, it empowers the enemy to make it so. You know, and I and and I've always every time I've ever said that to somebody, and they and they have quoted scripture and start, then they'll they'll stabilize. And you know, there's it's just it's just horrible what the enemy's done because I've seen. So many people, especially if they get on, um, you know, psychotropic meds and things like that. Um, is that the right word, psychotropic? A, um, you know, the there's, pharmaceuticals, however there's, you want to say psychotropic, it. antipsychotic, there's a whole litany um, of them. So. But I just, I just get so upset when I see what's been done with the pharmaceuticals. Because once they get on those meds, it's really hard to get them stabilized and then once they're stabilized then trying to get them off the meds so they don't have the other effects of that is really difficult that's why like um you know for for a place for program multiples to be healed they would need not only um i believe prophetic christian counselors because that's the only way that i knew to minister to someone is is i could see what the programming was uh, and then you just, you know, I'd plead the blood of Jesus, ask God to forgive the sins that put that in place, ask God to forgive the sins of their abusers. And when you do that, it just starts breaking things apart. Um, but I, I'm not called to do that. No. You know, I, I had to do it for a while. Uh, there wasn't a, a choice. But but in a, an optimal setting, you would need uh, tr- prophetic Christian counselors. You would need medical personnel that understood if they were on uh, pharmaceuticals, how to to get them off so they could remain stable. Um, I mean, it, it really would take. I you know I've I've seen it for years and I don't know how it's going to come to pass, uh, but I've seen like places where they could go and be totally restored. And I also think that God God can just do anything. And I and think I th- His presence can just. I think that if yeah. we can get the presence of God so strong in places, I think that that. Things can get straightened out that you'd think are impossible. Oh, absolutely. You know, one thing, one of the things that helped me get healed was I, I saw God protect us, and I had never seen that in my life. 
you know, that's why I had the parts uh, listening at night and things like that is, is there were parts of me knew what was there, knew the dangers, um, had no idea how to get to safety, um, saw God sustain us through the years, but never did I see him stop anybody until everything happened. The witch crawled in the van. The parts of me were free enough to understand the word, understand the kingdom, understand the power of, of um asking forgiveness for sins because the word says whosoever sins we remit will be remitted. Once I understood all that, boy, you talk about the kingdom on the scene. It, it was like we had been pulled out of the kingdom. We were, we were saved. Our spirits were saved. But we were in such a mess, we were pulled out of the kingdom to where the kingdom wouldn't operate and like we, we should normally see it. Well, the kingdom, the kingdom wasn't being taught. We were, t- we were being taught our whatever their version of, of churchianity was, mm-hmm. but we were not being taught the kingdom of God. No. And nothing was working for us. You know how, like in the Word of Faith and all that stuff, we were in those churches. We were in all that, and and it didn't matter uh, if we tied. It didn't matter what we did. I mean, Satan w- was on a mission to destroy us, and th- and now I can see why. Back then, I just thought, why in the <clears throat> world would he even bother with us? Why is he picking on us? <laughs> well, I, I mean, we're we're about as ineffective as you know a mud duck. So, uh, but now I understand what was going on. Uh, but but you know, like like the program multiples, Mike. They're very dangerous in the hands of the enemy. Yes. Because there are, it's like our friend who's passed away, Russ Dizdar, you know, told us about the chosen ones. Right now, they're trying to That's call them. forth those chosen ones. What did you say you saw it on the other day? Yeah, the, it was uh, Logos Bible software, and I, I love the, the software to death. But, you know, a lot of times what they'll do is they will hire out uh, advertising things mm-hmm. to to guys on on uh, Wall Street or wherever it's at Park Avenue, and every year they they do a, a spoof off March Madness, to where you know people are picking their their favorite uh, commentaries or whatever, and at the end of the month after you know it's kind of like you come down to the final four, then you have the the one that that wins, and then they'll have a big sale on it, and a lot of times it'll be eighty percent off, and so they'll come up with something this year. Uh, that that whole process, instead of being called March Madness, is called the Chosen Ones. And, and you and I been, both know that nobody sitting at Logos did that. It was no, somebody they paid to do the marketing. No, and nobody would even think about that, you know. And I've heard um, Christian speakers recently s- talking about Chosen Ones, and I, I don't think that they would um, understand what they were doing either. You know what I'm saying? But but they're they're being called, and Mike, they're... They were trained assassins. Yeah, that I think will be the kind that will will just go in churches and things like that. That's why I've been praying so much the last few years that God would forgive the sins that they've done, the sins done to them, the sins of their abusers, to break all occult power, make it impossible for the enemy to use them in Jesus' name. And and I do believe that a lot more was supposed to be done by now than has happened. So I know. All our prayers, you guys, are effective. They're making Just keep a difference. on keep on praying about that. You know, and any time you've seen on the news where somebody's went in and shot up a whole bunch of people, then killed themselves, yep. that's the basic programming it of is. a chosen one. It is. And you know, on a this this is on extreme level where endurance has been built. But just imagine um, you know, what God can do if we just have a goal in mind. Because I think a lot of times especially right now with what the body of Christ is walking through in the pandemic and, and so much sickness. And I've never seen attacks on the body of Christ like I have recently. I mean, it, it is all out war. Um, and so it's very easy to just feel like you can't make it. It's very easy to get overwhelmed, but, but we have to have a goal in mind. We do. Because this this is something that I learned as I was getting healed and I understood what had happened to me and and uh, why the things were placed in my mind. Um, they they have to build super soldiers to get done what they want. If you're a super soldier, the the training and everything that goes in it, the, the trauma and everything is to build you to where you have a goal in mind. And all you have to do is endure the pain, endure what's going on till you get to that goal. And because you have that goal in mind, you you can you can be sustained. Well, that's that's exactly the way our special operators do too. Like with, you know, when you were talking about adapting, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that's 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 the Navy SEALs. If you've ever watched when the SEAL team was on ABC or CBS, uh, they you always hear them say, "Adapt and overcome, adapt and overcome." Because when you get on the battlefield, nothing ever goes according to plan. Okay, and you're expecting three guards, and there's ten guards or whatever. You stop, you adapt, and then you overcome. And sometimes uh, I've, I've got one book on productivity written by a Navy SEAL, and he says, "What you got to do." He said, it's one target at a time. It's that one, mm-hmm. you, you have this goal, you need to go from A to Z, but you got to get through B, B, C, D, E. And he said, each one, he said, you just concentrate on that one. You knock it down while you have the goal in mind of getting to Z. Well, that makes sense with what's in my head then. Um, because it's like, it's like you can endure as long as there's a time period and, and a, a goal. And you know that once you reach that goal, then you're, you're out of pain, you're out of trauma. It's They've used the same, the same um, type of setting, I guess, in the, in the the training of that. You know, in a sense, I kind of used that even with our center because I remember, you know, when we first got it, and I was trying to act as the contractor and bring guys in and stuff, and and it's, it's like I was, I was starting to get ready to pull my hair out, and uh, in fact, the contractor we had now, we basically prayed in because we went through I don't know yeah. how many. You just couldn't get them to show up. <laughs> either the show up or when they did show up, the last thing you wanted was them to work for you. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't think so. And uh, and so I, I'm sitting there and just about to pull my hair out, and, and God says, you need to start seeing this center done. And once I begin getting the vision of that and begin praying that way, Father, bring bring the people to fulfill the vision. That's it. Bring the bring those in that you're going to anoint, just like when Moses, when they were building the tabernacle, and you supernaturally anointed workers to to and craftsmen to do mm-hmm. the job, Father. Bring those in, those that you have called that have that anointing. It wasn't right after that we were meeting with our chiropractor, which is he's a good believer, and he said, "Hey, I've got a good friend that's a contractor. I've known him for years, and he's a good Christian, and uh, out, everything he has done has been absolutely top shelf." And we're, we're so thankful. And, well, and, and so, but I, I think having that vision was the turning point for me pulling my hair to begin moving forward. Well, I, I believe that's true. You know, in the, if you talk about a program multiple, Mike, in the hands of the enemy, they're so dangerous. But you take that program multiple and you get them uh, offline. And when I say offline, that's just a term I came up with. Online is when you're being totally controlled, just, you know, lockstep with what your uh, handlers are telling you. Offline is something's went off and, and you're, you're not controlled, totally controlled anymore, and you're in a process of being uncontrolled. Uh, but sleep is one of the, the biggest factors. If, if you are a program multiple online, sleep is like... Um, the ultimate. You gotta have naps, you gotta sleep, or everything that's the only way everything stays in place. And I and so I'm I've thought so many times about when my youngest daughter was little and she didn't sleep. That had to be used by God. Because I mean it was taking every part of me switching out. You know what you'll do is you, you run through the energy of one part and then you switch to another and then you've got another set of energy. And I, I still will do that today. You know, if I if I go without sleep um, then I, I can have a part that can come up and, and is, is fully energized. You'd think like if you, you didn't have sleep for a couple of nights, you'd just be, you know, laying over, you couldn't do anything. I can still, to this day, switch to another energy. And, and that, I'm not saying this in anything in the occult. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird energy that the New Age uses and stuff like that. I'm just talking about physical strength. Mental alertness. And alertness that's there that shouldn't be there. And it's, it's because my mind had to do that to survive. Yeah. And so, so, but think about this. If you have all these program multiples, Mike, and they can get healed, they're already going to have an endurance level above and beyond the norm. You know, and when, when I look at you as a scenario, because everybody's always, you know, we've got to push for complete integration. We've got to push for complete integration. Well, sometimes because of circumstances, especially if you have military parts, that may not be the goal, but what the goal is, getting all the parts marching in formation with Jesus. Absolutely. With Jesus leading them. And that was what my goal was. Yes. I didn't care if I got what they call, you know, all and, integrated. I just, I had to know that every part of my mind 
loved Jesus, was was totally in sync, that there was no sp- evil spirit connected to me whatsoever. You know, I've, I've seen you doing spiritual warfare get into a situation, and it almost reminds me, have you ever seen the old WWF tag team wrestling where one guy's about to get uh, the snot beat out of him and he tags out and another guy comes in? It's like you were praying and all of it, and I've literally seen you switch parts like this part says, Back up! I can pray this better. <laughs> yeah, I do have I do have and, parts that and, can pray and, much and better. You'll, and you'll tag team, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you'll switch to a part that really is is great in faith and stuff. And I mean, we'll pray and move mountains. Okay, I'm done. Next one. <laughs> well, and it's also that you know those younger parts in me grew up. Uh, you know, I prayed until I could get get every part of me that was uh, arrested in development, whatever. Eight, I got all my parts at the same level. And that way, you know, that everybody knows the word. Every part of me, it's just there's dif- differences in strength level. There's differences in... Faith level. Yeah. F- faith level, there's differences in anointing. Yeah. Uh, like if I start crying when I'm praying, that's usually those those younger parts that just, uh, you know, love Jesus, had childlike faith. They grew up, and they're just they're just crying before him, crying out. And and used to, I would have another part of me say, when when she cries, the angels show up. And then yeah. there are other the the parts of me that I I call military trained. They were um, A through E. And when they they pray, it's more like almost like tactical maneuver <laughs> prayers. Yeah, you know. And so it's I just I did that's the only way I knew how to get healed. You know I. I kept seeing a lot of the the people that were praying with the program multiples, and and I've talked to you about this through the years. There were a lot of them that I didn't agree with their theology, and I thought if you don't have your theology right, and you're trying, and you don't uh, aren't led by the Holy Spirit, you're just going to keep somebody going in circles and circles. That's why in the beginning, and I was having people tell me, well, you're lucky if it's 10 years that you can come out of this, and, and maybe longer than that. And I used to think, and I would get so angry when somebody would say that, I think this makes Almighty God look small, and he's so much bigger than this. And it was my goal. See, I had this goal in there, guys, that brought the endurance to, to walk through all this, that I'm going to see Almighty God conquer this thing, this evil empire of mind control. And I believe God told me to stand there. It wasn't just a, you know, something on my own. But but I it it brought the endurance. I thought, okay, there's a goal in mind. Yeah. There is a day when little children are going to be safe to sleep in their beds. They're not going to be taken in the night. There's not going to be people taken and tortured. And, you know, through the years I've seen, it's not taken and tortured as kids uh, that this can be done alone with. My you can just take somebody in now with the technology and what they've done. And I think I think done create electronically, them. yeah. Um, and so, but but the goal was that. But the goal was to see safety. The goal was to see the the program multiples set free and God's kingdom just flowing. And we haven't seen His kingdom flow. That's why Mike's you know preaching so much about kingdom. It's it's absolutely imperative. And so you know, as I was thinking about, to me, there's a difference in the word patience and endurance. Patience, you just have to you know, just make a declaration. You're going to going to make it through something you know have patience until you see god move have patience until you you reach a a goal endurance has the connotation that it's not it's not just patience waiting it's you're going through stuff and you have to you know have intestinal fortitude and endure all this Mm -hmm. to get and that's what i think that has been built in us is the endurance through these years um and i just I just think that that's if we can all work together, you know, with believers around the world on on a lot of things, exposing the evil, teaching the truth of God's word, getting people delivered, getting people healed. I just think that that's, that's going to build endurance in us yeah. and where we aren't going to feel overwhelmed and we aren't going to feel like we just can't go another step. I think we're going to trust in God and he's going to he's going to build these things in us. And that's what I was asking you as we prepared the podcast Take us through some of this scripturally. You know, the, the very first thing that we need to, to remember, and we have, we have lost this truth because of the um, historical affluence that the church has had in America, mm-hmm. uh, that as long as you're living on planet Earth, in fact, I remember 
uh, years ago, one preacher said he was standing in, in a prayer line. This guy comes up and says, I want you to pray that I'm never going to have a tribulation or problem again the rest of my life. I know you're anointed. And he looked at me and says, you want me to pray that you're going to die? Because as long as we're in this yeah, world, we're, we're have. going to have tribulation. That uh, as long as we're here, we are in hostile territory. Now, that hostility may be uh, covert at times. Because let me tell you something, what we're seeing now as far as the hostility toward Christianity, uh, we're seeing it in cancel culture, we're seeing it in a lot of different things, has always been there, but it was kept behind closed doors and it was uh, being programmed into our youth at universities and and all these different things and then Marxists doing all the stuff that they're doing. Uh, It has always been there, but it was covert because it was not acceptable, acceptable culturally to make it overt. And right now, it is, it is quite overt. So it has always been there, and we need to wake up to the fact that if they rejected Jesus, what does the Bible say? They're going to reject us. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, everything in the world around you is, is set up to pull you outside of the kingdom. Everything. Uh, there will be resistance that is designed to hinder the answer to every prayer. You bet. That's one of the reasons, you know, when Jesus said, knock and it shall be opened, it, in, in the Greek, it is in the, in the now and in the perpetual. You knock and you keep on knocking and you keep on knocking until it opens. You ask and you keep on asking until you get. That's why when Jesus taught on prayer, he says, now from your perspective, it may, you may feel like you have an unjust judge, that won't give you justice, but it's because you're living in hostile territory. But your job is to be that that widow that keeps on knocking, mm-hmm. and until finally the judge says to shut this woman up, I'm going to have to <laughs> give her justice. He said that may be what it's from your point of view. You know, we learned from Daniel that even times of getting answered to prayer, there there can be war uh, between principalities and powers, the good ones and the bad ones, to answer that prayer. And, man, when you start praying for people's hearts to change, Mm -hmm. now that's a battle. Yeah, it is. Because sometimes dealing with demons and dealing with angels can be easy compared to dealing with somebody's stubborn self-will because God is not going to turn their will off. He has got to set them on a trajectory to change that will. Mm -hmm. Okay, We need to understand that culture led by principalities and the priesthood of darkness will always be resistance to the gospel of the kingdom and you're living out your faith in the public square. You know, one of the things that uh, Obama said during his presidency, which absolutely just got me the wrong, oh, yeah, you have, you have freedom of religion as, as long as you do it in the four walls of your church. That's, that's not anybody's religion. I don't, I don't care if you're Buddhist or whatever. Nobody does that. And it's, it's okay. We, 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 it, it was the Marxist in them saying, we got to put Christianity in a box. You bet. You know what? May every one of us, may God give us bunker-busting bulldozer anointings to knock the walls down out of every box the enemy puts us in, in Jesus' name. And guys, we need to expect resistance. You know, we've, we've had some things being taught that, you know, if you had enough faith, that if you prayed the right prayers, there would be no resistance. Mary, that, that's Pollyanna. In fact, I heard one minister that was teaching that, and he literally had the audacity to say, if the Apostle Paul knew what I knew, he would have never went through the things he went through. I'm thinking, when was the last time you were pulled up to the third heaven and instructed by Jesus? <laughs> you know, if, you, if you were such a hot guy and knew all this stuff, God would have had you born in the Apostle Paul's time, and you could have took his place. No. It's in this, this Laodicean affluence that we can think this. But I, I want to read Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Now, in the King James, it says patience, the New King James, endurance. And when you, and this is uh, Strong's number uh, 5281, and it means steadfastness, consistency, endurance. Uh, In the New Testament, characteristic of a man who will not uh, 
swerve from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials or sufferings. And when Mary looks at patience, it's like, you know, having patience with a child or, or whatever. But when you look at, let's say the Marxists in America, they're, they're patient, but that patience is shown in endurance. They're always working in the background. They're always trying to get the upper hand. They're, they're, a, they're adapting. They're trying to get another senator. They're trying to get their people in certain schools, and they will patiently work over an entire lifetime so that the next generation can take it and do it. So it's toiling. So, yeah, so, it's, so it's this looking not at the short term, but always mm-hmm. having the long term in mind. And what I have found about the elite, some of the things that we're beginning to experience now, Mary, they had planned right after the Civil War. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, and I, I document this in, in the, the Shiner Directive that there's evidence. Now, this letters have, historically, we knew they were there, and they disappeared at the main Masonic Lodge up in D.C., uh, that there were letters between uh, Albert Pike and Mancini over in, uh, I think that's his name is right, over in Europe, they kind of took over the Illuminati and they kind of split it America and the European division. They planned World, world Wars One, Two, and Three, at, right after the Civil War. You see, that, that's patiently lurking and waiting and planning and scheming and changing. Mm-hmm. and, uh, and we, It's evil endurance. Isn't yeah, it? It's evil endurance because it's fueled by hatred. Mm-hmm. Marxism is fueled by hatred and guys we are fueled by the kingdom i like what dake says here he says you have need of patience having so great a faith of suffering to pass through and they so and they have so long continuance god furnishes the grace you must exercise it god you see where the enemy his kingdom operates off hatred ours operates off grace that if we'll set ourselves to the task, God gives us the grace to endure. And then he goes on, the grace or principles of patience come from God. The use and exercise of that grace is of ourselves. Here ye must be workers together with God. Patience and perseverance are nearly the same. Mm-hmm. Okay, And so we, we've got to learn to have, the, to have this patience now. One of the things that uh, I noted, and it's, it's kind of one of my mantras when I was teaching the Life of Faith series years ago, is whatever you compromise to gain, you will always lose. Yeah, that's right. And man, if we have ever seen that in mm-hmm. the conservative, how many times have, have the left, now the left never compromise anything, okay? But they're constantly getting the right to compromise. And so you lose ground, and you lose you ground, and you lose ground. And eventually you find out you're so far in left field that you're not even in the ballpark anymore, which is where we're finding America. Uh, and the enemy will constantly, if you do not have endurance, will get you to compromise. Well, just, just go back to sleep and I'll leave you alone. Just go back and, and just, just, just go with the flow. Go with the flow. Uh, that's not kingdom. Kingdom, we're ground takers. Kingdom, we're city takers. And kingdom... We win hearts and minds to Jesus and to flow in his kingdom. We don't, we don't back off. We continue on. Well, there's kingdom people up in Canada right now. Yeah, there praying are. Praying and yeah, there are. backing everybody. A lot of people we love up there. And uh, I'm encouraged because I think it ta- it's going to take North America as a whole working against this evil empire. Absolutely. And a new insight that I put into this, not only will you lose what you compromise to gain, the enemy will use the occasion to take even more ground. Mm-hmm. Once, once you, you know, yeah, if you show any, any signs of weakness. <laughs> there's a, a old Middle Eastern term. Uh, basically, once you let the camel get his nose in the tent, the rest will follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, we've seen that with puppies and everything else. <laughs> once they get their little, their noses in there, they're, they will wiggle their way into the situation. That's why we cannot give the enemy an inch. You cannot give the devil an inch or a quarter in your life if you do. He'll get the, he, he, because he, he, um, prior to Jesus coming, evil was always represented as leaven. 
the, the leaven of mystery Babylon. You let just one little bit in, and it will eventually work its way through the whole lump. Don't you think that's why we see so many things that, that God did in the Old Testament, is he was preventing that from yes. destroying the whole camp. Exactly. Now, yeah. in the New Testament, Jesus, he brought a new virus. It's called the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Now, the kingdom, if you get a little in there, it'll eventually take over the whole lump. And I think that's what, what think that's what's happening right now in the hearts and the minds of the remnant is they're hungry and they're thirsty for kingdom. Uh, we also need to realize, and we need to change our paradigm because Laodicea, we, we get this microwave mentality. Here's the truth. Life is a marathon and not a sprint. And you have, that's why you have to have endurance and you've got to pace yourself exactly that way. Now, Paul, in, in several places, deals with this in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race will uh, all run, but one receives the prize? Uh, run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but you for an unimperish- or imperishable crown. Therefore I run, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, but not as one who beats the air. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. You see, that's, that's part of, of getting the vision and everything. You know, when, when you look at everything that needs to be done across the body of Christ, that's a lot of stuff. I can't do it all. Mm-mm. You can't do it all. That, that's why I, when... Well, uh, we have need of each other. <laughs> we, we have need of each other. Uh, you know, having, having a hand try to act like a pancreas just isn't going to work. It, it just can't do it. And uh, that, that's why I'm so grateful for all the colleagues that I have fellowship with, that each one of us have a specific anointing. And Mary, what, we, what I'm beginning to see develop out of this is that we appreciate that diversity of anointing. Mm-hmm. And, Get more done. <laughs> and, and utilize it. Uh-huh. Okay, this, it. This, yeah. is, this is your area of expertise. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, uh, we just, uh, in, in fact, uh, the Kingdom War Room I just taped yesterday um, with uh, Joe Dallas, uh, he's a Christian counselor, but he's dealing with he's dealing with uh, the cancel culture thing and how we can respond. And when you look at it, you know I was on there as a, as a practical theologian. Mike Spalding was on there as a pastor, and this guy is a, as a Christian counselor. And so you actually got uh, three different views of handling mm, the same systemic well problem. Well-rounded. <laughs> and it, it ended up being well-rounded because each of us were seeing it from a different perspective mm-hmm. according to our anointing. That's and good. I can't run off and be a counselor. I've, I've tried counseling. Uh, I, I don't have the patience. I don't have the temperament for I am a Bible teacher. Mm-hmm. And, and any time I step out of that, that practical theology uh, type of Bible teaching type of thing, uh, I will... I will flounder because that's not where the anointing is. And God's been dealing with that with him. He says, what are you? And, you know, he says, you, you get specific. And he said, now that you're specific, this is what you are. Don't let other people get you to step out of it because that's just as much a temptation as anything else. People will try to mold you into what they need instead of appreciating what I have called you to do. And you can, you can read over uh, the histories of a lot of men of God that were being used to God that if the people ever got them out of, out of that place that God called them into something else, that's when their ministries fell apart. But guys, that's, that's why he said, listen, that's why I, I'm not beating the air. I'm, 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 I'm very specific in what I do. That's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, that way I can win the race. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's a race, and it's, it's, it's not a half a block. It's 100 miles, but I'm, I'm going to win this race, and I'm going to, because I'm fighting for an imperishable crown. Well, what's that crown for? That one day when I stand before Jesus, I got something to cast at his mm-hmm. feet. It's not to strut around in heaven saying, did you see how pretty my wow. crown is? It's, a, it's like, if, if I'm going to have any pride at all, it's, Lord, I want to hear a thud. When I pitch that crown before your feet, because I want to see that your life really mattered in me during my lifetime. That's right. And that you were able to do things through me. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, 
Let us lay aside every weight, the sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So important. You know, in uh, in the time that the Apostle Paul uh, wrote this, and talking about weights, when a runner was practicing, he would he would put weights on his arms and his legs and on his back, and he would run with those in practice. But when the real race came, those all fell to the wayside. And Paul was using that as an illustration, saying, listen, the devil's trying to weigh you down. Throw it off. Throw it off. It may be the past. You know, the devil brings up, you know, you failed here and you failed there. Yeah, but I wasn't free then. Yeah, but then I didn't know what I know now. Yeah, you got to fight that because that'll tear at your endurance. And you know, there's there's no saying if the devil keeps on reminding you of your past, you start reminding him of his future. Mm-hmm. That no matter what you do, my God has already has already lived it all and has won. Yeah, he's and won the victory. And there's nothing that you can do to get the victory. Although he's trying, he's trying. <laughs> but guys, we and each one of us have the sin that so easily besets us. Whatever that is, identify it. That, that's the adapting part. Identify what you need to overcome and then overcome it. Mm-hmm. Target it. Blast it with everything that you have. Cry out to heaven to be free and not let go until you're free. That's right. And then, but this, the scripture doesn't stop there because he says, okay, now we're going to run the race with endurance set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. This one I have a hard time reading without crying who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Now he despised the shame, but he has sat down at the right hand of God, the throne of God. Now, what enabled him to endure the cross? You see, it wasn't just what we see in the flesh when you read you know, Isaiah 53, you read Psalms 22. Uh, there were a lot of things in the spirit, all the bulls of Basham, all of hell, showed up to mock him as he was dying on that cross. His own people mocked him because they didn't understand they had been deceived. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus could have come down off that cross at any moment. Yeah, he could have. He could have called. He said, listen, he he told Biden, I could call for 10 legions of angels. And you think the Roman army is something. Just wait to see what one of these guys can do. Took one of them, took out Sennacherib, you know, and and his army. His love for us held them there. The joy that was set before him was the vision of all of us coming into the kingdom. Of every soul saved from the first day of preaching on the day of Pentecost— until that last soul and saved yeah. has saved and matured before he comes back, he was able to see it all, and it was a joy. Yeah, God's family coming in. God's family coming in because he longs to be, and the Apostle Paul refers to this in, in Romans 8, 20, uh, 29. He's going to be the firstborn yeah, of, of many, many brethren. Having the vision, what has God called you to do? What has God really, really called you to do? Not not some pie in the sky thing. What has God really called you to do? Now, write it down. Get the vision of it. And begin removing everything in your life that's counter to that vision. Mm-hmm. Throwing the weights aside. That's it throwing them aside you got to throw your doubt aside and and uh saying i'm tired all the time aside and just a lot of things because you know you can talk yourself into tiredness you can talk yourself into giving up you know how many of us have seen people in church that have talked themselves out of a fight before they ever threw the first punch you know spiritually yeah and that that's what the enemy counts on is you giving up before you get there sometimes people give up right before they they make that breakthrough yeah you know, the, uh, the art of war said the best way to win the enemy is to win before the battle where they don't even fight. Mm-hmm. And, uh, boy, the devil has learned to do that. He has, but God's army's greater. But you're better. Mm-hmm. You know, John said, greater is he that is in you than is in the world. Mm-hmm. 
You need to let the greater one stand up on the inside of you and have confidence in him on the inside of you. He can give you endurance. He can give you grace. All of us have got a job to do. Some of it may just be praying in the kingdom between now and the the time that we go home. You know, some of us may be waiting on tables. That's actually the job of a deacon, even though most deacons would be absolutely terrified to realize that that was the <laughs> the uh, nomenclature of the job that they were they were voted in on at church. Um, but there's many, many things in the kingdom. You know, and uh, a lot of times when I go to these conferences and we'll have some guys for security, and they're saying, I'm doing my kingdom task. That's right. It's all right. It's needed. Yeah, me and Smith and Weston, and we're doing our kingdom <laughs> task. Um, there are so many things in the kingdom because it, it takes a lot of things to make it all run. That's right. And then you become the best at whatever that is you're called to do. You become the best that you can be at it to give God the glory. That's what it's all about. That's why. That's we're, why Paul said, "In everything that you say and do, do it as unto the Lord." Yeah, that's that's what I want to see is Jesus lifted up, the power of God shown, people be delivered, healed, and on fire to do what God wants them to do. Yeah, guys. It's it's a goal worth enduring, <laughs> enduring yeah. everything that comes so you, we can get there. Guys, our, the stronger our vision of our kingdom purpose is in our lives, the more supernatural strength it's going to release in us for the days ahead. Mm-hmm. And we, And I ask God to give us the uh, renewing of our mind to the place that we can can run this with endurance because you know we got to get our mind in the right place yeah we got to have our mind renewed to what the word of god says and our body will come in line our our mind affects our body <laughs> you know i remember years and years ago i was just getting a handle on what really god had called me to do and uh somebody that i knew that would get, could easily speak for the enemy said, you know what, you're nothing. This is going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, this, this, no, no, this is just absolutely nothing. You know what I thought in that moment, Mary? I said, thank you for confirming my vision. Mm-hmm. Because unless the enemy was afraid that I was going to get a hold of it. Yeah, why would he have said that? Why would he have said it? Guys, we, we, we need to understand the enemy plays sneaky. Mm-hmm. You can have a trusted counselor tell you just absolutely the opposite of what God's telling you because he had a moment in the flesh or whatever, ego going on. Well, you Probably. know that mo- movie, The Matrix, guys, you've seen that. And yeah, by anybody. the way, that, you know, when they release a new Matrix like they have this year, you can can bet that there's all kinds of triggers in that thing. But in that movie, where the any person within the matrix could become an agent, they just zap into them, and we're kind of like that today. There's so many doors open in people. Anybody can be an agent for the enemy to speak something, yeah. to do something. And in the the new movie, they have something called swarm mode, which acts a lot like the woke culture. Well, Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask heaven for grace. Father, we ask heaven for grace to to see our true purpose in the kingdom and to get a handle on it. Father, we ask for grace to throw aside every weight that so easily besets us. Father, we ask for grace to to grab hold of that vision so that Jesus may be glorified. And Father, we ask for grace that endurance would be released in our lives so that we can finish the race that you have called us to. That's right. In Jesus' name. In the Shinar Directive, we journey down the Luciferian rabbit hole to discover the matrix of darkness that has engulfed our planet. In the Shirith Imperative, we dug deeper to unearth the power source of hell itself and how the body of Christ can labor to impede its functioning in the earth and lay the groundwork for revival. Now it is time to unveil the mysteries of both the priesthood of the kingdom of God and the priesthood of darkness. Until these mysteries are understood, God's remnant cannot realize their purpose or be released with heaven's power to overcome the agenda of the denizens of the second heaven. The Kingdom Priesthood is a training manual for the remnant to discover their priesthood, 
their purpose, and their service to Almighty God. In the pages of this remnant manual, you will discover what Adam experienced in the first few moments of life and how those desires were written into the DNA of humanity. Revelations of what the Almighty meant when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Who were the first priests of the kingdom of God in the Bible? And who was the first priest of darkness? What was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil offering the first family of humanity? How we all share the same calling as Abel. The reality of the principalities' wars and how it is influencing the world today. As believers, how we are to function as both a priest and a tabernacle. The real purpose of the fire of God. How to carry the name of God in the earth with dignity and power. How the priesthood is essential for the releasing of end time warriors in the last days. How to flow in the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit to represent Messiah. The kingdom priesthood is a call for the remnant to receive the fire of God and become the assembly that the gates of hell cannot overcome. Get your copy today at Amazon.com or KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Oh, 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 oh.